In this module, we will study the application of the Huckel molecular orbital theory to another cyclic molecule namely cyclobutadiene. If you remember, we have already studied the application of this theory to 1,3-butadiene, but this time the molecule will be a cyclic one. HMO, as you already know very well now, that it is an approximate method which is basically used to calculate the electronic properties of organic conjugated hydrocarbons. The basis of Huckel molecular orbital theory is sigma pi electron separability. That means the molecule is treated in such a way that we consider only pi electrons of the system and sigma electrons are neglected. As you already know, we have studied it. The molecule is normally assumed to be a planar molecule in xy plane and then the pi orbitals or the pi electrons are moving in pz orbitals. The basis of HMO is therefore this pi sigma electron separability. Now how do we do HMO calculations? We have already shown that the basis of HMO calculations is variation principle using LCAO MO. That means in the linear combination of atomic orbitals to construct molecular orbitals we use pi atomic orbitals. Now if there is a molecule then for that molecule the first step is always to construct a pi molecular orbital. The pi molecular orbital is given by the expression. The expression for the molecular orbital using LCAO MO approximation is phi A is equal to summation I is equal to 1 to N Ci psi 2 Pzi. Here please notice that psi 2 Pzi is the pi orbital in the z plane located on the ith carbon atom. And then using this approximate wave function, one can apply variation principle to calculate the approximate energy which is given by the expression Ea is equal to integral phi a star h cap psi a d tau divided by integral phi a star phi a tau. Now this is the approximate energy which will always be more than the minimum energy E0. Now if we substitute in this expression the corresponding expression for the molecular orbital and then simplify it, we get the following secular determinant. This secular determinant as you can see here is an n by n determinant where for example the first row is H11 minus ES11 and this goes up to H1n minus ES1n and similarly the last row in this would be HN1 minus ESN1 then we have HNN minus ESNN and this secular determinant has to be equal to 0. Now the major challenge in HMO is how to solve it and for this as you already know to solve this secular determinant Huckel treated HII or HIJ, SII, SIJ etc. These are the various integrals. Huckel treated these integrals as the parameters that can be evaluated empirically by fitting the theory to experimental results. As you can see here, HII which is this integral is called alpha if I is equal to J and this is known as Coulomb integral. On the other hand, if it is Hij that means I not equal to J, 
then this is called a resonance integral. Similarly, Sij for which there is a general expression as you can see here, if i is equal to j then S i i becomes equal to 1 whereas if i is not equal to j then S i j is equal to 0. So these were the approximations which Huckel made and then if we substitute the values of these integrals in the secular determinant it gets simplified and then we have a simplified n by n Huckel determinant whose expansion will lead to a polynomial equation which will have n real roots and it will ultimately give us n energy levels and n molecular orbitals. The energy of any molecular orbital is given by the expression Ea is equal to alpha plus Xa beta where Xa is the eighth root of the polynomial equation which comes by opening or by expanding the Huckel determinant. Now after having done a quick recap of the Huckel molecular orbital theory, let us now apply Huckel molecular orbital theory to cyclic molecule which is cyclobutadiene. As you know cyclobutadiene is a 4 pi electron cyclic system and for the sake of our calculations we label cyclic butadiene as follows. Here you can notice that each carbon atom has two neighbors. For example carbon atom 1 has neighbors 2 and 4, 4 has neighbors 1 and 3 and so on. And each of these carbon atom contributes one pi electron which is in the pi orbital which is 2pz. Now using LCAO MO approximation the Huckel molecular orbital wave function for this molecule becomes phi A is equal to C1 psi 2pz1 plus C2 psi 2pz2 plus C3 psi 2 pz3 plus C4 psi 2 pz4. Now using this trial wave function one can find out the approximate energy and if we use the variation principle ultimately we will get secular equations. As you can see here the first equation is H11 minus ES11 C1 plus H12 minus ES12 C2 plus H13 minus ES13 C3 plus H14 minus ES14 C4 equals 0 and so on. Now these equations can also be written in the form of a determinant and it would look like the following. After having done this now we will apply Huckel approximations and after applying them this secular determinant will transform itself into the Huckel determinant. And the approximations which we have already discussed earlier they would be that H11 will be equal to H22 will be equal to H33 would be equal to H44 and each one of this will be individually equal to Coulomb integral alpha. Similarly H12, H21, H23 and so on all those which are directly connected to each other. As you can see from the diagram those will be taken individually to be equal to beta. Similarly the corresponding overlap integrals that H13, H31, H24 and H42 these will be individually equal to 0 because here these atoms are not directly connected to each other. Similarly for the overlap integral S11, S22, S33, S44 would be equal to 1 
and the rest of the integrals like s12 s21 s31 etc all those which are not with the same i and j would be equal to 0 now these are the huckel approximations and if these are substituted in the circular determinant we get the following huckel determinant as you can see here that since the coefficients determinant is not equal to 0 therefore the corresponding huckel determinant should be equal to 0 and therefore we have alpha minus e beta 0 beta in the first row and then so on in the last row we have beta 0 beta alpha minus e this whole determinant which is called huckel determinant will be equal to 0 to solve this huckel determinant we make the following substitution we put lambda is equal to alpha minus e upon beta and once we make this substitution the huckel determinant reduces to the following form lambda 1 0 1 and so on and the last row is 1 0 1 lambda and this has to be equal to 0 in order to solve this huckel determinant we expand it leads to the following polynomial equation lambda to the power 4 minus 4 lambda square is equal to 0 now if we solve this we will get four values of lambda these are lambda 1 is equal to minus 2 lambda 2 is equal to 0 lambda 3 is again equal to 0 and lambda 4 is equal to 2 these are the four roots of the polynomial equation which we get as you can see that from in this energy level diagram there are two electrons in the lowest orbital with the energy alpha plus 2 beta and then the remaining two pi electrons are one each of the two degenerate molecular orbitals with energy e is equal to alpha so there are four pi electrons and so these are accommodated in this way the last orbital with energy alpha minus 2 beta is empty now using this energy level diagram one can see that the total pi energy of cyclobutadiene would be 2 times alpha plus 2 beta plus 2 alpha that means 4 alpha plus 4 beta so this is the pi electron energy of cyclobutadiene if you remember in our earlier cases we also introduced the concept of delocalization energy so if we calculate delocalization energy here for cyclobutadiene that means the energy which it would have as compared to two ethylene molecules then the delocalization energy would be as you can see here 4 alpha plus 4 beta which is the energy of cyclobutadiene minus 4 alpha minus 4 beta which is the energy of two isolated ethylene molecules and this ultimately comes out to be zero that means the delocalization energy for cyclobutadiene is zero which is also indicative of the fact that there is no additional stability in cyclobutadiene after having calculated the energies of the various molecular orbitals now our next step is to calculate the wave functions for these molecular orbitals in order to calculate the values of the coefficients c1 c2 c3 and c4 for each of these pi molecular orbitals let's first write down what are the corresponding secular equations in terms of the huckel determinant you see here we get four equations first equation is lambda c1 plus c2 plus 0 plus c4 equals 0 second will become c1 plus lambda c2 plus c3 plus 0 equals 0 and then we have 0 plus c2 plus lambda c3 plus c4 equals 0 and last equation is 
c1 plus 0 plus c3 plus lambda c4 equals 0. Now these are the sets of equations which will have to be satisfied for each of the lambda values. Now we first find out the values of the coefficients for lambda is equal to minus 2. If we put lambda is equal to minus 2, these secular equations become, if we simplify these equations, the conclusion here is once we have C1 is equal to C3. Further simplification of these equation leads to, as you can see here, C1 is equal to C4. And this ultimately leads to C1 is also equal to C2. That means that all the four coefficients are equal. That's a very important conclusion. But we also know that because of the normalization condition, some of the scares of the coefficients is always equal to unity. Therefore, we also have C1 square plus C2 square plus C3 square plus C4 square is equal to 1. And since each of these coefficient is equal, therefore we get from here, as you can see here, that each coefficient comes out to be equal to 1 upon 2. So using this, the corresponding wave function for the molecular orbital becomes phi 1 equals 1 upon 2. In brackets, we have psi 2 pz 1 plus psi 2 pz 2 plus psi 2 pz 3 plus psi 2 pz 4. So this is the wave function for the molecular orbital which is for lambda is equal to minus 2 and which has the energy equal to alpha plus 2 beta. Now let's move to the calculation of the wave function for lambda is equal to 0. Once we have lambda is equal to 0, the secular equations become, if you look at these four equations, you will find that the values of the coefficients cannot be determined using the above set of equations alone. Further, we have to be clear about the fact that for lambda is equal to 0, there were two degenerate energy levels. And that is very important at this stage. And please remember that in the case of degenerate orbitals, HMO method cannot determine the coefficients uniquely. Therefore, one has to choose any value for the coefficient C1, C2, C3, and C4, provided they satisfy the conditions of normalization and orthogonality, as well as the values of the coefficients must satisfy the above set of conditions. So this is a prerequisite. Now using all this, a simple method to calculate the coefficients would be that let's put C2 to be equal to 0. Once we do this, then from these equations, we find C4 comes out to be equal to 0 and then C1 is equal to minus C3. Further, we have also the normalization condition. If we put the aforementioned values in this equation, which is the requirement for the normalization, we get now C1 equals 1 upon under root 2 and C3 equals minus 1 upon under root 2. And therefore, the wave function or the pi molecular orbital corresponding to lambda is equal to 0 is phi 2 equals 1 upon under root 2. Then we have psi 2 p z 1 minus psi 2 p z 3. If you remember, while calculating phi 2, we arbitrarily chose C2 to be equal to 0. But for calculating phi 3, we cannot repeat the process in a similar way because we must remember, and as we have also learnt it in the case of our earlier cyclic molecule, cyclopropenyl radical, we have already learned that psi 3 must be orthogonal to psi phi 1, 
phi 2 and phi 4. That means the following three equations must be satisfied. First represents, you can see here, is the orthogonality of phi 1 and phi 3. Second represents phi 2 and phi 3. And the third represents the orthogonality condition of phi 3 and phi 4. So these have to be satisfied. Let's take the orthogonality condition between phi 2 and phi 3. And now if we substitute the value of phi 2 which we have already calculated and put the general expression for phi 3, this equation on expansion and then further simplification of this integral as you can see here will lead to c1 is equal to c3. But then we also know that c1 plus c3 is equal to 0. Therefore, what is show is that c1 and c3 both individually would be equal to 0. And now if we substitute these values, we also get to the conclusion that c2 plus c4 should be equal to 0. Now, if we use the corresponding normalization condition and simplify the values of these coefficients, one notices that c2 comes out to be 1 upon under root 2, whereas c4 comes out to be minus 1 upon under root 2. And this therefore leads to the molecular orbital wave function for the pi orbital that is phi 3 to be equal to 1 upon under root 2 psi 2 pz2 minus psi 2 pz4. So this is the wave function for the molecular orbital phi 3. Now lastly, we have to calculate the molecular orbital for lambda is equal to 2. Again here, in a similar way, we will have the following secular equations as you can see here. And if we simplify these whole set of equations in a similar way, we get the corresponding pi molecular orbital which ultimately comes out to be, as you can see here, phi 4 is equal to 1 upon 2 psi 2 pz1 minus psi 2 pz2 plus psi 2 pz3 minus psi 2 pz4. So this corresponds to lambda is equal to 2. So you notice that we have been able to calculate the wave functions for all the four molecular orbitals. The procedure is very simple and calculations are not tedious and one can very easily practice them. Now here we are representing a pictorial representation of these four Huckel molecular orbitals for cyclobutadiene. And you can see very well that for the first molecular orbital with energy alpha plus 2 beta, the values of the four coefficients are given and the positive lobe because all the coefficients are positive. Similarly, for energy E2 is equal to lambda, we have two lobes, one lobe which is positive and the other lobe which is negative. And similarly, for the molecular orbital E3 with energy lambda, we have one lobe which is negative and one lobe which is positive. But these are the other two coefficients in this case. Whereas for the fourth energy level with energy equal to alpha minus 2 beta, we have two lobes positive and two lobes negative in the same molecular orbital. So this is you know, positive or negative will depend ultimately upon the sign of the coefficient that you notice very well. So this is the pictorial representation of the four Huckel molecular orbitals for cyclobutadiene. Now we will calculate the electron density at each carbon atom. If you remember, the total electron density is taken to be the sum of the electron densities contributed by different electrons in each HMO. Now the expression for the electron density as we have already studied earlier is Qn is equal to 
summation n i c i n square where n i is the number of electrons in the ith molecular orbital and c i n represents the corresponding coefficients while calculating these electron densities one has to keep it in mind that in the case of cyclobutadiene there are two pi electrons in energy state e1 while the third and fourth electrons singly occupied degenerate energy levels e2 and e3 so using all this we can calculate the electron density at each carbon atom as you can see here q1 comes to be equal to 1 because if you take the different components here one can see first is 2 which is there are two electrons in the first molecular orbital and then there is the coefficient 1 half whose square is taken then there is a third orbital one electron and then the coefficient 1 upon under root 2 its square and third is 0 0 and then we have ultimately as you can see here the total values comes out to be 1 similarly one can calculate q2 q3 and q4 and each one of these values comes out to be equal to 1 after having calculated the charge densities now we will calculate the pi bond order between adjacent carbon atoms in cyclobutadiene we have already discussed the expression for the pi bond order between the two atoms a b is given by the following relation summation i n i c i a c i b so where n i is the number of pi electrons in the ith molecular orbital and c i a c i b is the pi electron charge in the ith molecular orbital between adjacent carbon atoms a and b if we calculate the bond order that means the pi bond order between carbon atoms 1 and 2 as you can see here its value comes out to be 0.5 similarly the bond order between 2 3 and 3 4 all this comes out to be equal to 0.5 and the bond order between 4 1 also comes out to be 0.5 what does this show this shows that all the bonds in cyclobutadiene are neither single bonds nor double bonds all the bonds have character intermediate between single and double bonds so in this module today we have studied the application of hmo theory to cyclobutadiene hmo theory as we mentioned is an approximate method and it's basically used for organic conjugated systems cyclobutadiene molecule which we studied here is an organic conjugated hydrocarbon it contains four pi electrons and only these four pi electrons are considered in our calculations the rest of the sigma electrons and the nuclei etc all of them are assumed to be frozen and in the hmo calculations we use the variation principle along with lcao mo approximation to calculate the orbital energies as well as the wave functions we start with a trial wave function which is taken to be the linear combination of pi atomic orbitals in the case of cyclobutadiene there are four pi electrons so each molecular orbital had four contributions each coming from one carbon atom using this we ultimately get a molecular orbital which is used in accordance with the variation principle to calculate the approximate energy and we get 
a huckle determinant after making certain approximations which were suggested by huckle in the case of butadiene we get a huckle determinant of order 4 by 4 this huckle determinant when it is simplified it gives us four energy values one is alpha plus 2 beta the other two are alpha and they are degenerate and the last is alpha minus 2 beta so these are the four energy levels of cyclobutadiene and since there are four pi electrons two electrons will come in the lowest orbital which is of energy alpha plus 2 beta and the rest remaining two will be singly occupied by two degenerate orbitals each with energy alpha we also calculated the total pi energy of butadiene which comes to be equal to 4 alpha plus 4 beta and we also showed that the delocalization energy of cyclobutadiene as compared to two isolated ethylene molecules that comes out to be equal to zero after having calculated these four molecular orbitals energies we calculated the corresponding wave functions and we showed the procedure which is followed for calculating these wave functions we found that for phi 1 each atom contributes in the sense all coefficients are equal and positive and each of these coefficient value is equal to 1.2 whereas for phi 2 we showed that only contributions come from carbon atom 1 and carbon atom 3 but with a change in sign whereas for phi 3 it comes from carbon atom 2 and carbon atom 4 again with a change in sign and lastly we showed that in the molecular orbital phi 4 we have the wave function where the values of the coefficients are equal all contributing half but there is a positive value for carbon atom 1 and carbon atom 3 and negative for carbon atom 2 and 4 so we got the expressions for the molecular orbitals of cyclobutadiene further we also calculated the bond order between different atoms our calculations of pi bond order showed that all the bonds in cyclobutadiene are neither single bonds nor double bonds these bonds have character intermediate between single and double bond